since no one decided to watch me sing Taylor Swift, I'm going to describe the context behind her albums in a very, very, very condensed fashion. So, Fearless is about high school love stories, and Speak Now is more about love stories and relationships well, in like what in her years between 18 and 20. Um, Red is also about relationships, but like ugly ones. So, fun fact, I, I, I used to mix up all three albums, but they're all about relationships. It's just that there are different types of relationships that they're about. So, this is one who's still quasi-country. She's obviously a very obvious country singer in her debut. But, Red almost won an award, and it didn't. This is when Taylor Swift became a pop artist. This is how, like, 1989, my favorite album, actually came to be. The thing with 1989 is that it completely changes what... It's like it kind of goes through a life story, especially after she like m m went to New York. And that's what the song Welcome to New York is about. And that's how 1989 is going to kick off. But then there was a notable absence. And this is when there was a lot of controversy surrounding Taylor Swift and her, and her reputation was damaged. And that's actually what reputation is about. The song I Don't Want to Live Forever is part of Fifty Shades Darker to Zayd's song that Taylor Swift collaborated on. It's like the only Taylor Swift song that's not in one of her albums because it isn't hers. That being said, it was between 1989 and Reputation. It's falling into the Reputation era because it was part of that big scheme of controversy surrounding Taylor Swift. Like when I watched the online concert last night for Reputation, it's Snakes. That makes sense. It's, again, a very dark and gloomy album. And I, and, and I like Reputation. I like it a lot. But it's a very dark album. And that's kind of how, when you hear about someone being a rep girl, they can be trouble sometimes. Because if that's how you became a Swifty, because of Reputation, which almost was the case for me, that can be a bit of a problem sometimes. And it's, you know... Not exactly the best thing. Like, Let It Go was actually singing on one of Taylor Swift's tours. She invited Adina Menzel to sing Taylor Swift, and she even dressed up as Olaf. Let It Go came out in 2013, so while it could, in theory, be on a red tour, it, it really wouldn't make sense, because that was when Frozen was first getting its first hype. I actually still like Frozen. When I saw it on ice in 2014... I hated Frozen when I to see it in a Broadway show in 2019, but now in 2023, I actually would kind of like to see Frozen again, and I think I'd actually like it this time. So when I was asking my friend which world tour was on, he didn't actually know when Let It Go was released. He thought it was 1989, and he guessed correctly. But a big part of it was, he knew it wouldn't fall into reputation. Let It Go cannot be sung in reputation, and while it doesn't totally fit into the grand scheme of 1989, it fits in a lot better than um than reputation then came lover which again is more of like adult love story type and then came the COVID-19 pandemic and that's how where folklore and evermore get their roots from that's why they're both depressing albums and why I don't really like either of them they're COVID based albums evermore I found out from the Taylor Swift concert a little bit and while it's not exactly what my Google search said, it did say it was more of a continuation of what folklore was like. And I looked up folklore because I got curious after seeing what Evermore was like when Taylor Swift described it in concert, which again, I watched at home. Um, these were albums that weren't exactly meant to be performed in public because Taylor Swift didn't know if she could ever do a tour again. And so she didn't get to do a big lover tour. And... Folklore was not exactly meant to be an album performed in concert. Neither was Evermore. But it was, and while I didn't get to see Folklore, because I it got too late after to go to bed, I still have to see Folklore in concert. 
uh, same with a bunch of other albums. And, you know, FMOI, I didn't totally like it, but, like, I loved seeing Willow on stage. So, that was nice. And, again, that's, a, like, a big... And, again, they're, like, COVID-based albums, so they do have this gloomy feel. And then Midnight, which is kind of what Taylor Swift is, like, thinking of in the middle of the night... Hence why it's called Midnight. Um, and it's just like a, a weird combination. Midnight is a weird album, but knowing the context behind it, it makes sense. This is what Taylor Swift is thinking about, like, in the middle of the night. And there's, like, a lot of times mentioned in the songs, like, a lot of 2 a.m.s. But in the Midnight, it actually kind of um, dragged itself together a little bit. Anyway, so as far as the concert tour went, it was supposed to start at 10 o'clock, it started at 10.15 instead. Um, my second favorite song was Miss Americana and Hard by Prince, but that was like a 30-second intro that I barely got to see. But Lover was still uh, really cool. Um, then it was... What was after Lover? Um, shit, what was it? Oh, Fearless. It was Fearless. Evermore, so I kind of just did some, like, getting some, like, stuff in my room while that was happening. Didn't pay too much attention. And then there was Reputation. Um, Tired it was cut out because after Champagne Problems, they just had snakes, so we knew that it was about to be Reputation. And she did some songs from that. Then, um, Speak Now, which Enchanted was nice, and then Long Live wasn't. And then I listened to the first three Red songs of 22, We're Never Getting Back Together, I Know You're Trouble. And then I had to go before All Too Well. It was about, it was at midnight when that happened, which I know it's funny because of the Midnight's album. And usually in concert, if you were an hour behind, the Midnight's album would in fact be exactly at midnight. That was not the case this time. Nonetheless, Midnight was pretty late, but it still left ha half of the concert unseen by me. So when I can, which is in Rio, and I can watch it in a more reasonable time, I'm probably going to sign back on Don Red. Folklore is kind of eh, but I still have to watch it in concert anyway when I get the chance. I have to see 1989 in concert. And if it's a new Taylor's version, maybe I'll see that. Then there's the two surprise songs, and then it ends on Midnight. It ends on the album Midnight. And and the surprise songs could really be like anything, but she never repeats them. Um, or else she has never repeated them yet. So, you know, people always check that list because they know what they're not going to get. When she was in New York, she, Welcome to New York was actually a surprise song. And... Um, and when she was in um, Seattle, Message in a Bar is favorite song. So you, you cannot believe how jealous I was of everyone at that concert. Nonetheless, um, you know, it's just just a little thing. And I, I hope people actually watch this video. You know, I need subscribers because starting tomorrow, and this is assuming that the video uplo uploads on time, but, like, starting, starting tomorrow, I mean, like, it's going to be well by bowling where I haven't gained a single subscriber in the entire 28-day period. I got 229th of July, but that four-week period closing out. Um, I don't think I'm going to get any. I think I'm going to have to wake up and see that my channel has, in fact, gained no new subscribers. I don't even know what what it's going to show as on a percentage because July was a very prosperous month for my channel. And in August, it's fallen flat on its face. 153 subscribers to start off the month and so far still at 153. 
think it actually at one point peaked at 154 and then they lost a subscriber. That was very sad. Someone actually unsubscribed from my channel. So I, I've never gained that subscriber back. I've been stuck at 153. I don't know how I'm going to get more people to subscribe to the YouTube channel. My, um, my attempt in the Taylor Swift concert failed miserably as no one watched it. I mean, like... I honestly don't know what to do. I don't know how to get more attention on my YouTube channel.